the fill. We need to find the rev, 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 R-E-V, the rev. That's uh, what it looks like on the workshop. Yeah, reconnaissance and exploration vehicle. I wanted to call it like the Redneck Rover or something stupid and silly, but I, I just went with Rev because I wasn't drinking. And this is stuck. Come on, load. There we go. So now we go ahead and paste that in. You can see we got our pretty Rev. Rev is a badass rover, and we're lagged. I wonder if it's the recording software. This is laggier than normal. So, one of the first thing you'll notice is it's moving a little bit. It shouldn't be moving. So, this thing's got a couple of features. The cool features on this ship, besides all the batteries and all the other stuff. Where's that dog? I hear doggies. Yeah, this thing's not turned on. Ah! I'm gonna shoot the dogs. Meow, meow, creative mode is so much fun, I can just unload with a super gun. Okay, so I guess the first thing that we're going to do is let's jump into this thing. I'm going to flip over the second toolbar, turn on the Gatling turret, and we're still moving in this thing. Why are we moving? Is something attacking it? It's shooting at something. Ah, good for you. So a couple of the features this thing has, it's got a landing gear on the bottom and a maintenance lift. The maintenance lift is so you can do repairs a little easier. It's going to be rolling a little bit since we're on a hill, don't matter. So as you can see, we can now walk underneath this thing. Why is it, what is it shooting at? What are you doing? Nah, that's fine. So the maintenance lift allows you to get underneath this thing. You can see the programming blocks, you can see the underneath what we've got. We've got our little alarm system sensor there. we got some extra timer blocks down there that go with the um, sensor. It's so it'll turn on like the Gatling turret, turn on a siren and some other things. We've got a projector in this just in case you break something on the route. You can uh, replace things. It's got a gyroscope and ore detector because you want to find ore and a mass block in case you're on the moon. I think it kind of sucks on the moon though, so you might not want to do that. We're going to kill these two wheels wheel pieces here jump into the cockpit and we're gonna flip on the projector with the number nine key on the second toolbar and you can see that the projector came up no problem and here's the cool thing this is what you're not gonna find on most like rovers and whatnot is do that and the wheel comes in the problem with the wheel is it doesn't take the color because it's a separate unit so we gotta switch it back to the pretty red if you can't get that red color on the tires you can point at the reactor block down here and you can do a shift P on it. Maybe not because it's broken or it's like you have to break this chair. Ah, whatever. Okay, let's go ahead and turn the maintenance pistons down. With the maintenance, this pist maintenance pistons down, down, you can see that there's a landing gear. It's not set to auto lock. That's why it is white. Let's jump into the cockpit. You can reset the suspension on this. It's at 49 by default. Hit 7 to reset it. And you notice we auto locked on. So if we're on a hill or something, that auto lock is going to be our lifesaver. Turn auto lock off. We're going to kick these back up. Or I guess down. I don't know. And when we hit forward, tap, 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 it doesn't move. It's because the handbrake is on. You can turn the handbrake off via the toolbar. Or you can hit L for landing gear. I think that's the default. Eh, if it's not, you'll know what it is. But so one of the things that we have on the first set of the toolbars with this guy is you've got speed settings. So you can decrease the maximum speed that the tires will push or you can increase it. If you notice, we're going a little bit faster than the max speed. That's because it's uh, kind of hilly and sloped and whatnot. There is a gyroscope in this. So if we just mo use the mouse, we flip huh? when we try to turn too much. That's not good. Oh, that's perfect. We didn't destroy the gun. So one of the things that will end up happening is you will flip in this thing and we weren't supposed to flip that fast. So you hit the space bar, make the wheel stop moving, hit the back and you notice we're pretty stuck here good. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of spin it a little bit, start messing with these uh, settings on the side. And we're going to switch the direction that we're trying to push the unit. Bounce it a little bit, and we're going the wrong direction. We can rotate it. 
to get the gyroscope and oh my god we did it it was seriously that easy let's go ahead and kick this back to about 49 hit the handbrake spacebar to stop moving that's a pretty good unflip looks like something is out there what is that a dog or something Eh, who cares? Let's get to driving this thing a little bit. Which way was the sun? I think it was that direction. Get a little bit better light on this thing. You can see that this thing's pretty sleek. It's got a little info block at the beginning, and I probably shouldn't be driving and reading this, but it says like the basic features, what programming blocks we've used, and how to set the projector, just in case the projector settings get fucked up. And sometimes they do with the... Uh, um, when you upload them to a workshop or save a blueprint or don't save something in the blueprint and then upload it. It took me a few tries to get this thing going. The other thing that we've got is inside of the cockpit view, um, outside of the annoying lights, which might be fixed a little bit later, but that's okay. Um, it says the name of the ship, how fast we are going, the time, and our GPS coordinates, how much battery power we've got, our reactor usage and the cargo usage which is kind of blocked out a little bit there and we need to pay attention to where we are going or we're gonna flip and we're flipping oh man we're just wrecking it all right landed pretty good look at that we're in decent shape so we got the cargo usage base on that one side we've got cargo usage duplicated on the other side how many ores we have and you can see there's default that comes with 1k of ice and then we've got some gas summary and a few other things it's a little bit of a bitch to read but it's just kind of there for aesthetics so to say yeah, but you, you get the gist of it you get the main things that you need the cargo usage which is on the top and hopefully it'll scroll it's using the m master um a little what is that like configurable automated lcds or something and it, it seems really popular and uh, configurable enough um, then we've also got another thing that sets the turret up where the turret only has one piece of ammo. So if we do a search for the NATO ammo, we've got 100 rounds, 98 rounds in the medium cargo container, and there's only two in the turret, not one. It keeps two in there, and that way it can continually load. So if we take that out and we give it like maybe five seconds, I think that's what it's set to, about five seconds. In between that time period, the ammo is gonna be pulled out and put back into the gun. And you just notice that it removed it too. So it'll remove excess ammo in case we wreck the, or like flip too hard on this thing. And if we land on the Gatling turret and it breaks the thing, um, yeah, it's just gonna end up killing it. So that's like the, the base features that this thing has. It's got antennas, it's got uh, the beacons in it. It's got everything that you'd think you'd need in a system. There's even a toolbar configuration for the lighting. If you want the lights to be a little bit brighter, they've added this radius thing into the game recently, so you can kick it up all the way and see just about everything. Oops, that is in front of you, and that's the gun turret, we don't want that. Let's go ahead and turn the lights back down. I don't know if I really care for it, I wish they did, instead of the radius, the, um, what is it called, spotlights, spotlights have another setting the intensity the intensity is the distance on this thing and let's see oh, are we quick enough to lock the gear no kick that down and of course we got the auto lock off the side that's not what we wanted but we'll go ahead and turn that back off and if you're actually prepared for it and we do this right you can lock the rover kind of like on the side of a hill, which is pretty cool because most of the times if you don't have this lock and you just have the handbrakes enabled, let's just go ahead and enable the handbrakes, flip back, turn the auto lock off and unlock the unit. You notice the rover's sliding so that landing gear is really awesome on the bottom and as long as it doesn't catch all the time while we're driving, it's a really good thing. So, let's continue moving on. Let's see if we can kind of just drive through an area, see how this thing handles, and get some good footage of a wipeout or, you know, something just kind of crazy, how to wreck this thing. Just get you an idea of how this thing actually drives in a real world scenario. Of course, we're on creative because we're just doing testing, showing off this guy, showing how she works, cool lighting. Oh, God, this thing... I, you know, the first versions of this thing came out like crap, and I was actually super happy with this thing. I thought it was going to be the stupidest rover ever, and it came out not too bad. Uh, you could tell we 
do some bouncing on the hills and a bit of flipping. Oh no! Don't roll. And that's what the gyroscope is for. I'm hitting the uh, um, the roll keys, um, like the left and right rolls, quite a bit. And we're getting some air there. What is our? There's the tab key. Our angle isn't too bad. So there's the sun. That's gonna have the meteor storm. Let's go to it. Um, and the cool thing is, is when you say the name of this vehicle, Rev, it's like you're revving an engine like Rev, Rev, Vroom! Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Look at that. He's shooting meteors and stuff. Oh, God, one of those things is going to definitely hit us. Why is my view off? Stop doing that. Is it? I don't know. There's something, something in the game that's changed since, I don't know, there's so many changes in it. I, I don't like that I keep getting kicked out of the angle view, but or like the exterior camera view. But as you can tell, it's not too bad driving from the interior. You've got a lot of view that you can see around. You can see your tires. Those are such awesome red tires. And you can see your angle. So if you want to play like a first person view, it's, it's pretty decent on that. I didn't add cameras to any of the sides. So you're just stuck with the cockpit view. Well, that's okay. Most most people are, are going to be going into a view like this and whatnot. And oh, there we go off a cliff. And oh, we did some damage. Oh no, that was a big hit. So no problem when we have damage like this, we can kick the landing or the the maintenance pistons up, jump out of it, turn our jetpack off, and it looks like one of the maintenance pistons got blown off. Not too big of a deal, right? And then our wheels back on. We got to get the color set right, and it's already set to the right color. And we lost a button. What else did we lose in here? So the landing gear hitting hard ended up taking out a little bit of the um, like timer blocks and stuff around in the area. Not too bad. So one of the things you want to do when you're driving this thing around like a maniac is making sure that you end up. Um, keeping spare parts with you so we got to find that other landing gear not landing gear the other piston that isn't extended so which one is different that one so we'll extend that one and then we push the button and they all come down and now you're on the road we've had some damage and you're back in business in a matter of seconds changed our landing gear might break off or it might get stuck so when you do get stuck if you're we're not stuck too bad but if you do get stuck really hard you can bounce the suspension around and hopefully if you're moving while bouncing the suspension it's just gonna send you flying and there we go we got a little bit of a jump some air out of that one let's kick our suspension back to about 40 something um, did we get stuck hard? We're pretty decent. And this is how you do not drive this per the recommended manual. And I think this will get fun fast. And oh boy, we gotta roll this guy over. Oh, we didn't get any air. We didn't hit the end of the cliff yet. Landing gear took. Unlock that. Realize that we're being an idiot and just tried to save us. Now, let's do it right. We want to get down to the bottom of this hill as fast as possible. And keeping control is hard to do. That's no problem. We're a self-proclaimed expert driver. <laughs> Just lost their gun. There we go. Now we're going downhill. Whoa! And that is why we put an ammo limit controller on this guy. And now we got the air that we wanted. Down the hill fast. Eh, kind of shitty. Losing a little bit of this, the gun turret, but... <laughs> and the landing gear on the bottom. No problem. Oh, shit. 
Oh! Oh boy. Well, I said we get down. Not down in one piece. Did that thing just blow up? It's still going! Look at that thing! I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a quick view of what you can do with a crappy little vehicle that takes very little resources. And that's not going to shoot this thing right at me when I'm trying to do an outro. Outro. Outro! Well, I guess I will see you guys next time. Stupid. Look at that. The stupid dog's freaking attacking me. And the thing's not even doing anything. How stupid is that? It's just dumb.